In this guide, you'll be learning how you can configure used SEO WordPress plugin. That is one of the most popular free SEO plugin for WordPress. So let's get started with this tutorial. So this is going to be a long video. So grab a cup of coffee or switch off your phone because you don't want to be disturbed in between. So I've set up this demo site for this tutorial and the very first thing that we'll be doing, we'll be installing the plugin. So search for Yoast SEO. So the plugin is installed now, let's activate the plugin. And one thing with Yoast SEO, they keep changing the interface. So after a while, the, if the interface may change a bit, don't worry because the process is going to be almost the same. All right, so this is where you can start configuring the Yoast SEO option. So let's click on dashboard. Let's go to general. And here you can start configuring the plugin. Before that, let's click on features and enable the advanced settings. This is disabled by default before the new piece, but you should enable this because it's going to help you a lot. So enable this, click on save changes. And while we are on it, let's disable onpage.org and admin bar menu. We don't really need it. So click on save changes. Now let's go back to the general and open the configuration wizard. So this will bring up a screen like this. Um, the first screen, it will ask you to sign up for the newsletter. Let's skip this. Is this a production site, staging site or development site? Let's call it a production site. What kind of website is this? So depending upon what kind of WordPress site you have, uh, you should select one. So in this case, I'm selecting blog. Click on next. If it's your personal blog, let's say I have a personal blog called denharsh.com, I will select person, but in this case, it's a company. So I'll select company, I'll add the company name. It's a good idea if you can also add a default image. Since I don't have one, I'll skip it. But if you have a Grauta or a logo for your blog, do add that here, click on next. Now, this is where you will start adding all your social media profiles. So if you have a Facebook page, add the complete Facebook page, add Twitter username, add your Instagram URL with the HTTP. So uh, start adding all social profile that you have, then click on next. So if you want to make a certain post type as no index, you can configure this here. So in this case, we'll keep all these settings as default, click on next. If it's a multi multiple author blog or single author blog, it's a single author blog. So I'll select no, click on next. And now here you can link your account to Google Search Console. We will do this process in the next step. For now, let's click on next. So what's your website name? Shout University. Let's just keep it simple. Click on next. Again, asking us to sign up for the newsletter. No, thank you, Yoast. I'll click on close. So this is the major changes in terms of UI they made recently. Now, the very first thing that you and I need to do is click on the webmaster tool. Click, let's submit our website to Google Search Console because this is very important for search engine ranking. So just click on Google Search Console, open this in a this in a new tab. And this screen will give you option to verify your ownership. So click on alternate methods, select the HTML tag option and copy this tag between the quotes paste it over here and click on save changes. Now, one thing which you need to know if you are running a cache plugin, make sure that you clear your cache. Now, once that's done, click on verify. That's it, the site has been verified. Now, we will use this later on to submit our sitemap. I'll show you that later on, but first let's go step by step. Now, let's go to title and metas. Now, from here, we will start configuring all the options one by one. So Yoast SEO also offer readability analysis and keyword analysis, let's keep it enabled. Now click on home page. So this is your site name. Now, if you remember in the last screen, we put our site name as Shout University. So we'll just keep that. And we can also add any extra keyword. So I added make your career online and let me show you what exactly this means. So if you see this option, shout me loud and this shouter who inspires award-winning blog, this is exactly what will appear in the search engine. So your site name will be uh, Shout University and whatever uh, text that you will add, it will start displaying in search engine when somebody will search for your domain name. So make sure you add, add something meaningful. Similarly, in 160 character, define what your website is all about. Try to make it meaningful. 
give an idea that what your blog is about. So let's say if you have a blog about fashion, you can talk about, hey, this blog talks about all the latest fashion tips and tricks. We feature new fashion trends and XYZ. Make sure that you limit this in 158 characters. So once that's done, you can click save changes now, or let's simply move ahead. Now this is the different post type that you have. By default, I have three post type. Posts, WordPress pages, and WordPress media. These are the images that we upload. S some of you might see more option here because you might be using WordPress custom post type feature. So you need to configure things accordingly. Now in this case, let's remove everything else and just keep that percent percent title, percent percent. That means only your post title would appear in the search engine. And let me give you an example. So in this example, you can see I have post title plus it's already added the website name. So this is not what we want to do. What we need is the post title to appear. And that is why we are selecting person person title. Now don't get confused with this result because this is an archive page. And sometimes Google by default add website name. So don't get confused. In your case, just keep this portion. Similarly for pages, we'll do the same. We'll keep the meta robots as index because we want our post to be indexed. Either you can show date in the Google search result or you can hide it. So if you are running an evergreen blog, you can consider hiding it. If you're running a news kind of blog, you should show your dates. It's so again the same thing. In the media, again, keep this as default. Now let's go to taxonomies. Now this is for your categories and tags. In this case, we'll be select making our categories and tags as no index. And this is one of the mistake that most of the newbie bloggers make. What they do is they keep their tags and categories indexed. Now, one thing which you need to understand, tags and categories are for your website readers. It helps them to navigate your blog better. And it's also useful for us to uh, structure our blog carefully. However, for the search engine, it does not add any value. So if you have your categories and tags as indexed, you should definitely no index them. And then let's go to archive. Now archive pages are your author archive page or the data archive page. You can enable or disable it. That's completely your choice. What really important is we'll keep it no index. Similarly, data archive would be no index because again, they don't add any value to the search engine results. Click on other. Now, sub pages of archive. So, you know, every domain ha uh, have page navigation like domain.com page one, domain.com page two. So we'll keep this as no index. Do you want to use meta keyword tag? We keep, we'll keep it disabled because it's not so useful these days. And now let's click on save changes. So with this, we have configured our titles and meta section. And now let's configure the social part. So this is going to be the same that we were configuring earlier. You need to add your Facebook page URL. Let me quickly do that. So I've added all the URL and most of my social media profile link. Now, of course, uh, it will be different for you. Now go to Facebook. By default, this is enabled, which is good. You can have a default image that's for your homepage. If somebody is sharing your WordPress website, homepage on Facebook, whatever you will add here, like the image you will add, the title that you will use, the description that you will use will be shared. All right, this is very important. Now, second is add Facebook admin. This is another useful feature that you can enable. Uh, I'll skip this for this tutorial. Now go to Twitter and here, one thing you must change is select summary with large image. Now what this will do when somebody will share blog post from your blog, the featured image will also be shared or the, one of the image will also be shared on Twitter, which actually helps you to get more CTR in turn more traffic. Uh, similarly, you can submit your website to pin interest and you can copy the meta tag here to verify your website on pin interest. This is another feature that you should uh, try using. And similarly, if you have a Google plus page, if you have not created, you should go ahead and create Google plus page. It's going to be very handy for you, especially for SEO. And once you have added all this, click on save changes. Now, while we are on it, there's one feature that most of us miss out on using, and that is click on edit my profile. Once you're on your profile, here you will see this option, add your Twitter name and add your Facebook profile URL. Make sure you add your Facebook page URL. Let me do that. So I've added this Facebook uh, profile URL. Now you might be wondering, what is the use of this? So let me quickly show you an example. So this is my shout out Facebook page. Whenever any article published by me is shared on Facebook, 
it also shows my name and the link which helped me to get more followers and good for the social proof so uh, make sure you do add your facebook profile url here click on update profile and this ends up our social part now let's move to the xml sitemap part so one of the good feature of yoast seo is it also supports xml sitemap feature now you don't need any other plugin for this feature so you can enable or disable sitemap over here you can select which post type should be included in your sitemap if you have a very new blog you can keep at post pages and you can also include your categories and tags i usually don't include tags i suggest keep add your categories add your post pages and if you're using any custom post type add those click on save changes so if you have any blog post uh, your sitemap will be generated you can click on this link to check your sitemap so we also need to submit our sitemap to google search console doing that will help us our blog our website to be become a part of google search really fast and let me show you how to do that so open a new tab and go to google search console so if you remember we just verified our website in google search console now all we need to do is click on add a property and add our website so html tag is already verified let's select it and click on verify now our, our website has been verified and we are already inside the search console of our website now here click on sitemap and here you will see the option of add and test the sitemap now in this case since i don't have a blog post let me quickly create a demo blog post so let's click on XML sitemap to see our sitemap and just copy this part sitemap underscore index dot XML paste here and either you can test it or you can directly submit it since in this case I already know my sitemap is fine I can simply submit it uh, let's refresh this page and you can see how many sitemaps are submitted so there is one sitemap submitted and it's still pending so it could take about a few hours before the sitemap will be crawled by google search so we are done with the sitemap part now the next section is advanced let's click on that now the breadcrumbs this is very interesting because when i started experimenting with breadcrumbs on few of my other sites i realized it helps us to get more traffic and that's a significant difference and let me show you example of how breadcrumbs look like in search engine so here in this case you can see this is the bread, breadcrumbs it shows me the uh, domain name then the category name and that's how the breadcrumbs appear in search engine now on shout loud i don't have breadcrumbs enabled so here you can see the direct url appears i recommend you to enable breadcrumbs keep the separator like this taxonomy to show in breadcrumbs for post type let's add category click on save changes and that's it the breadcrumb feature of yoast seo is compatible with most of the wordpress themes so it should not be a problem for you now click on permalinks section here you can if you are installing a wordpress blog for the first time you can decide if you want to keep category in the slug or not i'll definitely keep it now redirect attachment url to parent post url select redirect stop word in slugs select keep it remove Re remove the reply to com variable select remove and that's it click on save changes now go to the rss part by default here you don't need to do anything but just in case if you want to add a banner or anything in your rss feed you can do that from here by default rss feed of your blog will show this post the link of the post appear first on your website name which is also hyperlinked by default you don't need to make any changes in the rss feed and let's move to the next section and that's tools now Yoast SEO let you edit few of your important files like you can edit .stxs file you can also edit robots.txt file so let's click on file editor and here you can create a robots.txt file this is the default stxs file so let's click on create robots.txt file that's it save changes to robots.txt and the default robots.txt file is fine when you move ahead when your blog is growing then you might need to play with the robots.txt when you move to the advanced part of the uh, search engine optimization that will cover in the upcoming course of shout university now let's go back to the tools page there are two more options bulk editor import and export 
So bulk editor is useful when you have uh, published many blog posts and you quickly want to make changes in the SEO title and all those stuff. Especially if you're going to start using Yoast SEO after watching this video, you'll find this feature very useful. Similarly, you can edit title, you can also edit description. Now the last and most important feature is the search console. What this feature offers is you will be able to see crawl errors directly inside your WordPress dashboard, which is very useful. So let's click on gate Google authorization code, click on allow. And this is the authorization code that I got from Google. So I simply copy paste it over here and click on authenticate. Now in this case, I'll select Shout University demo and click on save profile. And that's it. From now on, it will start showing you any error directly for WordPress dashboard. Let me give you, let me show you an example from a live site. So this is an example from my live site on Shout Me Loud. You can see like uh, these are the links, which is getting 404 errors. So I can decide what I want to do. I can either create a redirect, a 301 redirect. So Yoast also offer a premium version, which enables 301 redirect option, or you can use a free plugin called redirection. That's what I use to redirect what any of this link to the any link of your page. Well, I will talk about the 404 pages in SEO in the upcoming lesson. For now, this is what Search Console feature of Yoast offers. Well, pretty much that's it in terms of configuring the overall site SEO with the Yoast SEO. But your job is not done because the real job starts when you write a new blog post. So now I'm in a new uh, write a new blog post section and here you can see uh, this particular box, which is which is from Yoast SEO, what it does, you can optimize your single blog post for any keyword. And I will show you example from one of the live site. Let me quickly add some content so that I can give you an example. So I've just added content on this page. And now you can notice if you scroll down, by default, this will show the title of the blog post. Now, this is where, where it gets interesting. You can have two different titles, one title which will be shown on your blog and one more title which will be shown in the search engine. So this title that you see, this can be different and the blog post title could be different. And how do you do that? You can simply make some changes here. So I just made some changes in the title. Now this title is what will be shown on the search engine, whereas the people who are coming to my blog directly will see the title over here. So that's one trick which is very important for you to know and understand. Now, similarly, you uh, by default, search engine will show the description from the blog post. However, you can write a complete different meta description, which is more tailored to your audience, which talks about what this post is about. So you can write a complete different meta description here. Now I've added a meta description. Now what it does is like uh, when search engine will index your website, it will show the de meta description that you have added, or sometime it will show the meta description from your blog content. It varies depending upon the user query. However, it's recommended that you write a unique meta description of 158 characters. That's what I do and that's what I recommend. Now let's click uh, on this section, which is again very useful and something that people miss out on. So you can have different title for Facebook and you can have a different title for, for Twitter. So when I add Twitter title, what I do is like, I also add hashtag. So what it does is like when somebody shares my blog post on Twitter, it also includes the hashtag. So it improves the visibility. Another thing which is very important over here, you can decide what image will be shown when somebody is sharing your content on Twitter or on Facebook, you can simply upload an, a new image. So in this case, I've uploaded just one this image and I will use this image for the Facebook image. Similarly, I can create a new image. I can upload a completely new image for Twitter. The recommended size is this, or I can use any of the image. Now, typically when we create a blog post, we add three to four images, but none of these images are optimized for social media. So this is another good practice that you can start using to improve your visibility on social media. Now, one thing which you should know that on the title on Facebook can be completely different since it's a social site, you can have a different title which is optimized for Facebook and similarly for Twitter. And now let's click on the third option. Let's click on the advanced section. And this is useful. This is a little advanced feature, but good for you to know, uh, number one. Let's say you're writing a blog post which is just for your audience and not for search engine. In that case, or you don't want that particular blog post to be indexed in search engine, to be part of the search engine. 
uh, let's take an example of a press release. You're publishing a press release. Now you don't want that press release to be a part of search engine. What you do, you click on no index tag. By default, all the links in a blog post is follow. You can select no follow to make all the links, no follow of that particular blog post. Now canonical URL is good when you're using the syndication feature. Let's say you're publishing the same blog post from your friend blog on your blog. In this canonical URL, you will add the link of the blog post where the post was published for the first time. This is the canonical URL feature that is used on medium.com and many other websites. So knowing this feature will help you to make more out of Yoast SEO plugin. So with this, we are on the, at the end of Yoast SEO plugin guide.